Laptop computer spins onto the screen, opens, and displays ATP Education Program webinar series, closes, and then spins off the screen. Hi, and welcome to our last video in a series of videos on switch assessment. We've talked about the assessment process itself. We then delved into determining an appropriate switch location, looking at a hierarchy of potential switch sites, and then moved into various switch types. We're going to finish up this series by talking about wireless and Bluetooth switches. My name is Michelle Lang. I'm an occupational therapist in the Denver, Colorado area. I do a lot of switch assessment with my clients, and I tell you these uh, wireless and Bluetooth switches can provide us some nice options. So again, this is a part of a series, and we are on the very last video within that series. I encourage you to check out the other ones. So we're going to be talking about wireless switches. This means there's no wire between the switch and what it plugs into. This is my friend Alexi. He loves finding the wire, pulling on it until he breaks the jack on his communication device. Not a good scenario. So the client doesn't get entangled in the wire. The wire doesn't get damaged. Whatever it's plugged into doesn't get damaged. But a power source is typically required for these switches to work. So someone has to remember to turn them on and off. They have to remember to change the batteries or recharge it. And it is important to have a backup wired switch just in case one of those things hasn't occurred. So let's, let's look at a few options. AbleNet has some wireless switches in their Beamer series. So they have a big Beamer pictured here in the middle and then a Jelly Beamer off to the side. And these are the size of their big red and Jelly Bean switches. Now these are really designed for someone to hit with a hand, but fortunately there's a switch jack on the side so you can plug in any switch you want and place it into a different location where the client has better control. A receiver is required, and you can see that's pictured on the bottom left. Now, each of these, the transmitter and receiver, have to be turned on and off. These have batteries inside, and unless you buy rechargeable batteries, you will have to just replace the batteries periodically. Even if you have rechargeable batteries, you're going to have to take them out, put them in the charger before you can use the switches again, and that's not always very convenient. These do have a sleep mode, meaning that when no one's using the switch, it tends to use less power for a while, and that helps to extend the battery life. AbleNet then came out with another wireless option, and these are the mini beamer transceiver and uh, transmitter and receiver. The mini beamer pictured on the left here will also work with the original receiver that we saw on the previous page. And the receiver will work with the jelly beamer and big beamer. Well, why would we mix those up? Well, to save money because the mini beamer is more costly. But typically you're just going to buy these two and use them together. There's some unique features of this. The top of this is a proximity switch. So you just have to get close to the switch to activate it. You can plug in any mechanical switch. So if a different switch works well for that client, you can use that switch instead at whatever placement works for them. A big advantage of these is they are rechargeable right on board. You plug in a little mini USB cable and charge them up. And that really is much more convenient than changing out batteries. There is a little power button on each of these. It is important to remember to turn them on and off. There is some visual and auditory feedback also when the switch is activated, which is nice. Uh, it will work in direct latch time minutes or time seconds mode like a switch latch and timer. So you can choose which mode of operation you would like to use. So it's a very powerful yet small option. One portion of this would plug into the operating device. The other would plug uh, into whatever switch your client's using if they're not using it directly. Another wireless option is from Simply Works, and this is distributed in the United States by Inclusive TLC. 
It comes in large and small sizes, the switch itself does, similar in size to an AbleNet Big Red and AbleNet Jelly Bean. It requires a specific SimpliWorks receiver. Now they have quite a line of these switches and receivers and lots of various options. So I would encourage you to check out the website to get more information, but this is yet another option. And you do need to use the switch that is identified here. You cannot plug in a different switch. We then move on to Bluetooth switches. So wireless switches eliminate the wire. That's great. That means that now I can have my switch by my client. I can have a receiver attached to whatever they're controlling and no wires in between. No wires to get caught in, no wires to get damaged, pulled, etc. Bluetooth switches are also wireless, but they have a different purpose. Their purpose is to pair with a Bluetooth receiving device. So now instead of having a receiver plug into, say, this tablet, the tablet is going to pair with my Bluetooth switch or Bluetooth interface, again eliminating wires, but doing much more. I now have an actual paired system and that allows me to take advantage of switch features on the paired device. Now, these switches do require a power source still. So they either will have a battery or be rechargeable. They need to be turned on. We need to remember to change batteries or recharge the uh, system again. So in general, Bluetooth switches can be paired with a tablet, sometimes with other technologies as well, to control a variety of applications. Some of these will only work with specific applications that are designed for a switch. Others will work using the accessibility features in the paired device. So a very commonly used Bluetooth switch is from AbleNet and it's called the Blue 2. It's been revised a number of times over the years. It allows access to quite a few devices and this does change as our technology keeps changing. So I would encourage you to check out their website for the very latest in compatibility. As of now, it will work with the iPad, iPhone, and iPods for those people still using those, as long as they're running the operating system version 7 or above. It will also connect with Apple laptops and desktop computers, computers running Windows 10, Chromebooks, Chromeboxes, Android phones, as long as those are running their operating system nine or above. So quite an array of various devices. Not sure if your device will connect with Bluetooth. Well, most of these devices listed here, well, all these devices listed here have the ability to pair with Bluetooth devices. Depending on the device we're pairing to, it is important to keep in mind how many things can be paired. So for example, on my phone, I have a remote little earpiece that's paired so that I don't have to hold on to my phone. I can have hands-free operation. Well, depending on my phone, I might only be able to be paired to one Bluetooth item at a time. So if someone is using a Bluetooth switch, it's important to make sure that the device can support it along with other Bluetooth devices it might be connected to. This uses Bluetooth 4. This is, as of the time of this video, the most current Bluetooth technology. It's a more reliable connection than some of our older Bluetooth. This is important because if the client is relying on that connection to independently access their technology, this could be lost, that connection, and now the client no longer has independent control. This particular Bluetooth switch does have a rechargeable option. So you plug in a special cable, plug it into the wall, recharges. It also has two switch jacks because this has two switches on the surface that generally would be controlled by someone's hand. If your client can't do that, you can plug in any type of switch. This is programmable so you can tell the Bluetooth switch itself what 
function each of those switches is going to execute depending on what this is connected to sometimes very specific commands are required for example maybe space and enter are required to operate a particular application you can choose those two commands Praetorian, which is available from Inclusive TLC in the United States, has something called the Applicator. It is a Bluetooth switch interface, so I can plug any switch I want into this, and from there I can pair the applicator with my desired device and have again wireless connection as well as Bluetooth capabilities. This can be used with switch adapted apps, so applications on a tablet, for example, that are specifically designed to work with a switch or switches. It'll also work with iOS devices, Android uh, switch access. So using that built-in accessibility on the iOS devices, it's relying on the switch control accessibility feature. You can also use the applicator to allow a switch to control music, videos, or even take pictures uh, from your paired device, which is really very nice. So you can connect any switch you want. There's 24 possible features, one feature per switch. You can plug in up to four switches. So depending on how many features your client wants to take advantage of, more than one switch will be required. They also have a Bluetooth switch itself, and that's called the iSwitch, also available in the United States from Inclusive TLC. It comes in two sizes. Uh, one size is uh, similar to um, the size of a Big Red and the other to a Jelly Bean size. Just like with the interface, you can use this with switch adapted apps, iOS, switch control accessibility feature, uh, you cannot do this with Android, however. You can also use this to play music videos and take pictures. It has two programmable switch jacks on the back, so if somebody cannot use the surface of the switch, you can plug in a switch they can use. If they are able to use the surface of the switch and you plug in two other switches, that allows up to three different functions. You have the ability to execute up to 24, so you choose three particular functions. So for example, perhaps two functions that are required to control a switch app on a tablet, and perhaps the third feature is taking pictures on that tablet. This does have a rechargeable battery, which is nice. Don't have to swap out those batteries. Just have to uh, plug in a cable. So thank you very much for joining us for this last in our series on switch assessment, talking about wireless switches and Bluetooth switches. This particular video, more so than the others, is a little more likely to change. This is an area of technology that's changing a little more rapidly, particularly in terms of compatibility. So if you're considering some of this technology, I highly recommend you go to that manufacturer's website and check for the very latest information. If you have any questions for me, this is my contact information. Feel free to reach out. And again, thanks very much. I do hope this information has been helpful for you. Thank you for watching. For more information on the ATP Education Program, please visit our website at atp.nebraska.gov forward slash education or email us at atp.education at nebraska.gov.